welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing a deck profile here for Imperial Dramon. This is definitely a very interesting deck given that it was one of the first cards that actually came as dual colors, which definitely is obviously very exciting to begin with, but at the same time, we were kind of afraid that it might lose that support later down the line. However, unlike so many other decks, I'm really happy that it continued to receive so much support for this deck as well, so that we can continually upgrade it. So with that being said, I hope you guys actually enjoyed this particular one. If you do, drop a like, share, comment, subscribe, it really means a lot for this channel, even if it means just watching one more video. But that being said, I'm open to so many suggestions as to how I could possibly improve this deck. So definitely, if you have a deck list that you want to share, please do so. It really could help out not only me, but other people interested in this deck as well. Now with that being said, let's begin. Alright, now to start off here with the Digi Eggs, this is going to be a very interesting ratio. But we're going to be playing one copy of Demi Vmon from BT12. And we're going to be playing four copies of Minomon from Starter Deck 9. So both of these are definitely just really nice cards that kind of complement one another. But I preferred the Minomon mainly because it does give you more of a boost. And I do find that my deck I mainly do play a lot more blue. So the Minomon does seem to have a bit more synergy with the deck itself over the Demi Vmon. Not to say that Demi Vmon doesn't do its own contributions here as well. Moving on to level 3s, we're going to be starting off here with 4 copies of Vmon and the 1 copy of Wormmon. I just find that in this particular circumstance, the green engine is not utilised as much. So for example, Wormmon, I'm less likely to be searching for Kin Ichijoji. So with that being said, I'm only playing the one, whereas with the Vmon, I'm more likely to be searching out Davis, which is why I'm playing more. Now, I probably would readjust this ratio to maybe 3 Vmon and 2 Wormmon. Maybe this particular one here was a bit too drastic of a choice, but with that being said, it does both do pretty much the same thing, allowing you to do your DNA Digivolve. So next up, I'm going to be playing four copies of Vmon from Starter Deck 9, and I'm also going to be playing four copies of Wormon from Starter Deck 9. Both these cards are definitely very nice, allowing you to, again, just like the other ones, Digivolve from either green or blue, which is definitely fantastic. I like that Vmon allows you to search for more cards, but Wormon still gives you the potential to go for your DNA Digivolve. So both, again, has its contributions here. If anything, what I would probably do is I would replace this particular Wormon with the uh, BT12 Wormon that we were going with uh, earlier on. Uh, just because I do find it to be a little bit better and the only reason I haven't done so is because it does have slightly less DP which makes it less optimal for this particular deck, at least in the early game. So moving on, we're going to be talking here about XVmon. I am playing four copies of the EX1 XVmon, but I'm also going to be playing two copies of the ST9 XVmon as well. Now the EX1 XVmon does have jamming, which is what makes it so much more powerful, which is why I'm playing four copies. Its inherited effect also gives jamming as well, which is definitely very nice. It's one of the reasons why I love this deck so much. And as for XVmon from the ST9, well, it allows you to reduce your cost as long as you're going to be going with a green Digimon. And its inherited is also pretty decent to gain a little bit of additional attack as well. Now, this is where you're going to start seeing a little bit of that imbalance when it comes to the colors. I'm only going to be playing four copies here of Stingmon from Starter Deck 9, but you'll notice that. In terms of level 4s, we are going to be playing less greens uh, and a little bit more blues. Now this of course allows you to again reduce cost but also having a nice inherited effect as well. But one thing that I did notice while playing this particular deck was that the green effects were definitely a little bit more underwhelming compared to the blue. 
which is why I did prefer to play a more blue oriented variation of this deck. That's not to say that you can't just build a more green dominant variation, definitely try it out if you want, it's just that I do prefer the blue side of things. Alright so on to level 5, so we're going to be playing both variations here of Pale Dramon, uh, the one from ST9 and the one from BT12. They're pretty self-explanatory, allowing you to pretty much do your DNA Digivolves, which uh, yeah, it's just pretty awesome for what it is. They could almost act as if they were their own level 6s themselves, so this particular deck definitely has a bit more of an aggressive start before you start whipping out your Imperial Dramon. Of course, to complement the Pale Dramon, we're going to be playing the Dino Beamon, Again, similar case, two from the starter deck 9, two from BT12. Very nice cards that you can just DNA Digivolve into as well. And yeah, similar case, they have great inherited effects, which uh, just allows you to either boost or maintain some sort of control over the game. All right, so moving on to level sixes, we're gonna be playing a very interesting uh, variation of Imperial Dramons in this deck. So let's start off with the two versions here that we have first, and that is the Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode from ST9 and also Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode from BT12. Both of these are definitely very viable options and they are actually quite powerful. The one from ST9 is surprisingly really good even though it's a very simple effect although it does act more so as a complementary type of level 6. That being said though, the one from BT12 is definitely going to be uh, a little bit nicer in terms of getting into, just because if you do Digivolve from Paeldramon or Dino Beamon, it will be a slightly lesser cost. Now the Dragon Modes were mainly just to get things going, however you want to get that aggressiveness then you're going to have to play the Imperial Dramon Fighter Mode. So I'm going to be playing the one from BT8, only one copy, but I'm playing two copies of the one from BT12. This is just a huge paragraph of text, but what's important is that you can get additional security attacks, but you also have blockers as well. Together with all of your other inherited effects that you're getting throughout the game, it's definitely very nice and very rewarding. Keep in mind this whole deck also just does a great job at reducing the cost when Digivolutions. Uh, so yeah, definitely a fantastic addition to the deck that we can actually mix between four different variations of Imperial Dramon. Alright, so moving on to the Tamer cards, we're going to be playing uh, both versions of Davis, uh, two from BT3, two from BT12. Uh, either you have memory setters to add more cards, or again, just uh, more memory gainers, and also just having a bit of uh, cost reduction as well. It all just adds up and definitely is very rewarding for this particular deck, given that they're also pretty searchable as well with some of your earlier cards is an added bonus. I'll wrap things up here with the final Tamer cards. We have Davis and Ken, we have Sora and Joe, and then we have Ken just by himself. More memory setters, more memory gain. There's really not much else to say. It is a blue-green deck, so honestly, it's a pretty straightforward deck that doesn't really need much explanation. So let's talk about option cards. We're going to be playing two copies here of Hammer Spark. It just allows you to gain more memory. If it gets hit from security, that's two extra memory. Definitely very nice. And we're going to be playing the one copy of Hidden Potential Discovered. We only allowed one. But that being said, you would have noticed both Hammer Spark and Hidden Potential are zero cost. So you are definitely maximizing the usages of your memory here and we're already reducing the cost of our Digivolutions as well so you'll find that this particular deck definitely has quite a bit of speed and it allows you to accomplish so much in very little time. Now when it comes to options we do have to play some cards to sort of counter the opponents. In this case I'm wrapping things up here with two copies of Mega Death. 
It's only a cost of five, which is surprisingly cheaper than I thought, given that it is capable of so much. Suspend one of your opponent's Digimon, then return one of your opponent's suspended Digimon to its owner's hand. I mean, that's pretty darn good, if I must say so here, because there's so many cards now that sort of trigger or at least prevent deletion, but to bounce it back to the hand, it's very nice because it could be very inconvenient for your opponent. All for the cost of 5, which is meant to be a lot cheaper than, for example, Gaia Force, then you got something really good going on for this particular deck here. So that was pretty much it for today's deck profile. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, I'm open to any sort of feedback you have for this particular deck. Share me your list as well. I'm definitely very keen to see. But with that being said, I hope you all have a fantastic day. And I thank you all so much for joining me today. I'll see you all next time.